We've just seen that an important consequence of the conservation of potential vorticity are planetary Rosby waves, which arise from the combination of small perturbations on the geostrophic flow and the systematic change of F with latitude. A similar phenomenon can arise by considering the gradient of another component of potential vorticity, H, the depth of the fluid. Let's begin with the conserved quantity, the potential vorticity, Q, which is equal to the planetary vorticity plus the relative vorticity over the depth of the fluid. If H is constant and F has some latitudinal gradient, then in order to maintain this quantity in the presence of small perturbations in F, the relative vorticity of the fluid, zeta, must adjust to account for these perturbations. This leads to a rectified effect whereby westward propagating planetary Rosby waves are generated. We now consider the case that there is a variable depth, h. When we had the beta plane approximation, the expression for potential vorticity became f0 plus beta y plus zeta on h. Now we want to consider the case that f is constant, but allow h to vary. We express h as some function of the reference depth h0 plus some slope factor alpha times y and eta, the free surface height function in x, y and time. This y here is not necessarily latitude. It is the direction of the topographic slope. Because we have no spatial structure to our coordinates, because f is constant in this exercise, we can choose our coordinates so that y is in the direction of the topographic slope. This helps later when we are looking to compare parallels between the topographic and planetary Rosby waves. So our expression for potential vorticity becomes q equals f plus zeta on h0 plus alpha y plus eta. We can then repeat the same derivation procedure as for the planetary Rosby waves, except with this y alpha term representing our variable depth, and return the topographic Rosby wave equation as the rate of change of the free surface minus the Rosby radius squared times the rate of change of the Laplacian of eta, plus our topographic slope term alpha times gravity on f times the x gradient of eta. Remember here that the x direction is perpendicular to the topographic slope, which we have chosen as the y direction, and that the Rosby radius is the square root of gh on f. So with this wave equation, we can express eta as we did before in wave form as some reference eta times the cosine of kx minus my minus omega t, where k and m are the along slope and across slope wave numbers respectively, and omega is the frequency. We can then rearrange for omega to get the dispersion relation for topographic Rosby waves as omega t equals our slope term alpha times gravity on f times k on 1 plus r squared outside of k squared plus m squared. Again, we can explore the bounds on this relation and quickly discover that the longest waves have a maximum speed of cx equals alpha times gravity on f, and these are oriented in the x direction, so along isobaths, and that the topographic Rosby waves have a maximum frequency of alpha gravity on 2fr, which reduces to alpha on 2 times the square root of g on h, which is interesting because it doesn't depend on f, only on alpha, the slope of the topography. Recall the physical implications of small flow perturbations in the presence of a gradient in f, and the generation of westward propagating planetary Rosby waves. Now consider the same case except for a gradient of h instead of f, where perturbations towards shallower waters tend to squash the water column, perturbations towards deeper waters tend to stretch the water column. In order to conserve potential vorticity with a reduced h, we must also reduce the absolute vorticity f plus zeta, which in the northern hemisphere, where f is positive, means a reduction in the relative vorticity zeta. Conversely, 
perturbations towards deeper waters increases H and needs an increase in the absolute vorticity to conserve potential vorticity, which again for the northern hemisphere requires an increase in the relative vorticity zeta. As with the planetary Rossby waves, the net effect along the original stream path on a contour of H is a flow which for the northern hemisphere has deeper waters on its left. Now unlike planetary Rossby waves, topographic Rossby waves can travel in both east and west directions and have deeper waters on their left in the northern hemisphere and on their right in the southern hemisphere. To briefly summarize this, we have seen that planetary and topographic Rossby waves arise as a result of conserving potential vorticity. Planetary Rossby waves result from perturbations in a domain with a gradient of f. Topographic Rossby waves result from perturbations in a domain with gradients of h. Both lead to changes in zeta, generating wave-like motions along lines of constant latitude or isobaths. Both have phase propagation with smaller f on h to their left. For planetary waves, this is westward, and for topographic waves, this is with the deeper waters on the left in the northern hemisphere and deeper waters on their right in the southern hemisphere.